Okay, so here's a probably more practical example of advanced cutting techniques that you'll most likely come across. Uh, one of the largest instances of using masking in rigged puppets is obviously eyes because you want the pupil to stay within the eye white. So uh, as in Adobe Animate, uh, you're using a lot of masking to sort of hide and show things at the same time. So here's just kind of a plain vanilla eyeball that I've built out. I'll put it, um, I have basically, I'm inside of a uh, deformation, uh, group composite right here. So I have my deformation of my eyelid right here. So it's just a basic curve deformer, which means if I wanted, I could sort of bend it up like that. I could bend it down like that. So again, a lot of kind of fun things I could do with this eyelid deformer and give my character a lot of interesting blinks and eye expressions and all that good stuff. Um, the eyelid artwork is under the deformation, under the peg. Here we have the pupil. So I have the pupil on a peg, which is separate from the highlight. So if you wanted to animate the highlight separately, you can actually do that. So it just gives the animator freedom to animate that granulation if they so desired. You don't have to, but again, that's where you as a rigger uh, make a lot of decision making. Uh, the pupil here is obviously uh, the bigger part. And I want, I threw both of those on a composite because I want them to uh, be masked together. Instead of sort of having three different cutters, it makes sense to put them into one, one image. The composite's basically baking it, flattening it all together. And lastly, over here, we have the eye white. So this is just the white artwork of the back of the eye. And again, I've thrown that on a peg as well. It's just good sort of a working habit to throw most artwork on pegs like this. You don't have to, but again, uh, when you work in studios, you will see pegs more used than not. Uh, so it's good to get in the habit. Um, I've gone ahead and centered the pivots for all these pegs and set everything up. Um, so I'm gonna use two different cutters here. I'm gonna use a cutter for the pupil. So here I'm going to have both the eye white come in as the artwork, and I'm also going to drag it into the mask. And then the composite for the pupil, I'm going to come into the visible output and drag it to the composite. And then I have my pupil that's all masked and ready to go. So no matter how I drag it over here, it's never going to sort of go on top of the eye white as it were. And again, if I wanted, um, I could animate, just hitting B to kind of go up, the eye highlight to sort of help with directional stuff. Um, so that's the first cutter that we're using the eye white for. It's for the pupil. So the pupil artwork is coming through and it's being cut by the eye white, which is also coming through being visible. The second one is the eyelid cutter. And again, say you don't want this black of the eyelid to extend outside of the pupil. Um, you want it to be cut off by where the white of the pupil is. So in this case, again, we're gonna take the eye white as this sort of uh, mask, and we're going to just drag it over here into the little bandit mask. And for the eyelid, we are going to disconnect it from the composite, put it into the eyelid cutter, and then reconnect it over here. So now you'll see that all the area outside of the eye white has now been masked out. And all I'm going to see outputted is uh, the, the stuff that is inside of the eye. So here's kind of just a basic setup of something that you're most likely to come across in terms of rigging any character with eyeballs that you want it to have a pupil and an eyelid. Again, it's not the only way, but it's uh, one way you could definitely approach it using cutters um, intelligently. So I hope you found this helpful.